Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome to this video on what to expect when you're expecting to upgrade your collaboration lab to version 12. Now this video is not going to be for everyone because each person has a different use case, but for mine, uh, it was a couple of things. Number one, I always feel that uh, to really learn a technology, not only have a lab, but eventually make it your home environment. So I have, you know, I had a Cisco lab, which then becomes my home production environment. So as far as me going to version 12, there's really two reasons. Number one is even though I recertified my CCMP routing switch back in December, the CCNA voice had retired. So um, in order for me to have any type of current voice and video certifications, I need to do the CCNA collaboration and CCMP collaboration uh, exams. And since I saw that the CCIE version uh, or the CCIE collaboration is moving to version 12. Well, might as well uh, upgrade my home environment to version 12 as well, or at a minimum have a version 12 lab. So the good news, um, as you can see, I have a fully functional version 12 system here with a phone. I've got uh, dial tone registration. If we go here. We can see my phone's registered. Um, there's still a lot of things I need to set up on here, but um, if we go to our licensing, we can see that it is, uh, let's see if I can zoom out. Uh, you can see that it is registered. Everything's good to go. It's managed by the smart uh, software uh, manager satellite. But I uh, just wanted to talk, kind of talk to you about um, some of the um, issues I came across and um, potentially how you can um, get around it and or just, like I say, set kind of expectations if you're like me and just want to jump into it right now. So I guess the biggest elephant in the room to begin with is the smart contracts. Now, when I first got involved with the Cisco um, studies back when it was on version 7 and up through 8.6, Cisco would give you demo licenses that didn't expire so you could set up a home lab easily or a home production system easily and just to uh, play with the technology and get a good hands-on feel for how it worked and it would never expire. But then when they switched to Cisco Prime, it became kind of more of a niche market where, which is actually why I, from version 8.6, I used um, up through until version 11 came out because at that time, somebody, one of the uh, viewers, it told me about the NFR, the Not For Resale program. So if you either work for a, a partner or have access to a partner to purchase it, for 315 US dollars, you could get um, a package that would have some licenses that you could install on Prime and then uh, have non-expiring licenses. So that's what I did um, at the end of 2016, uh, set up a lab and a home environment using that NFR process since I had access to a partner. Now up until that point, the good thing is like if uh, the partner goes out of business or what have you, or Cisco goes away, you still have your licenses and you can basically just run your system as you normally would. But now uh, Cisco is moving pretty much all their product lines to the smart contracts where uh, Cisco manages everything and it's on a contractual basis. So even if you buy some non, uh, like if you go through a partner and buy a uh, license through them and you have a smart account through them, then if they go out of business or something, then you actually lose your licenses because you're gonna have to register every you know, 30 days uh, to be able to get that. And there's a few ways to do that, and I'll, I'll touch on that uh, to begin with. Um, but I think that's the biggest thing is because previously when I ordered an NFR, it would be tied to my uh, CCO account, and I get the packs, register them, call it a day. Well, uh, when I ordered the version 12, I didn't realize it was smart contracts. I just saw they had an NFR version and um, just assumed you could set it up but that's not the case. Um, you have to, uh, through your partner or organization, get a specific um, access to a central uh, smart account, and then they can create, uh, you know, virtual accounts for you. Which I, uh, after I purchased the NFR, then it went. I didn't know where it went, and apparently all the smart contracts have a default location, so whenever you purchase new smart contracts, they go to the default, and then from the default you can uh, 
I guess you call it like a partition, you can then um, divvy out those licenses however you uh, see fit. So with that said, um, it took me a while to figure out where those licenses went. I eventually was able to get uh, a smart enabled account and they uh, created a virtual um, account for me so then I could move the licenses that I had purchased over to um, the to, to my uh, smart account uh, so then I could register. And there's a few ways to do that. Um, but one of the things with the NFR too, when I ver order version 11, um, I receive everything, uh, the VCS software, the, the all the licensing, uh, UCCX. In this case, I'll just uh, zoom in here. These are basically the files that I got with version 12. Um, you got some recovery, some bootable for emergency responder, Unity connection, I am in presence, and uh, collaboration or CUCM Unified Communications Manager uh, bootables and the upgrade files, and then the uh, Cisco Prime collaboration uh, OVA and some OVA templates. And then it also came with the Cisco paging server, which I noticed is actually integrated into CUCM now, so I'm not sure why there's a separate install. But that's it. So you're going to have to find uh, the UCCX 11. I mean, because from wh what I could see is if you don't have the install file, then it's not there, which it came with the previous version. So I don't know if this was just, uh, um, I mean, in, even before I got this, I had to wait two months uh, because from the time I placed the order because they're having some problem generating licenses or something, and they gave me an option to renew it. So um, I think this is just, you know the new deployment um, bugs if you will so I have some of those now from my previous version 11 purchase but just to give you a heads up this is you're not going to get the collaboration uh, uh, unity you're not going to get the uh, Cisco Unified Contact Center uh, like I did and as well as the TMS for telepresence or the uh, VCS, which I think you can download VCS um, without a smart contract. Um, I could be wrong, but uh, that's the thing is some of the things I have also have smart contract or uh, regular contracts for um, then like smart net accounts. Um, th that's from there, not from the NFR specifically. So um, that's just one thing to keep in mind if you're, you're uh, purchasing this. The other thing is with the OVA template. Uh, for example, if I say deploy new OVF template, and I'll select the CUCM12, one of the options you can see on the high level, um, it shows that um, gives you the template details, uh, 190 uh, gig thick provision. Um, but if we get in here, and I usually choose the smallest one, so when I selected the 2500 user node, it shows that you know it uses one CPU, six gigs of RAM, and a single 80 gig disk hard drive. Well, when you do that, when you try to install it, it's going to say that you have no, uh, there's no software that's compatible with the hardware you're trying to install on. So I end up having to bump this to 110 gig for it to finally uh, take and see CUCM is an option to install. So that's one thing um, as a heads up. And then um, on the actual licensing, if we go to uh, the license manager, uh, when you click on the view edit license smart, uh, you can see here uh, you can communicate directly, but with all my any type of lab environment, uh, I try to keep it isolated so there's no public internet access. If it did, and I did test it with it, you can go direct or you can use the uh, transport proxy. Um, and what you basically do is download the uh, smart software management satellite, which is just another, you know, um, appliance that you install just like any of the other ones. And then um, you... Uh, specify the URL, which I'll get into that, or you can use a, a proxy. Um, so when I when I did it directly, um, and let's go over to the 
um, software.cisco.com because this is where you initially have to go. And uh, let me log in here. All right, so when you have your main uh, setup here, you would go, you've got your traditional licensing where you have your packs, then you have your smart licensing. And then uh, under inventory is where all your licenses go, your smart licenses. So you can see the virtual account is default here. So I'm going to change to mine, which is uh, VA Slacker. And um, here, if you click on the licenses, then these are the licenses that I have. Let me see if I can zoom. Okay, so um, now one of the issues I had was the CUWL is like the top tier um, license, so there's 20 of them, and usually I would this uh, the enhanced license would show zero, and what would happen then is if you like this and use one, it would actually subtract from the CUWL licenses and call you uh, compliance. Now when I was registered directly, when I had this uh, call home session set to direct, everything worked just fine. Everything showed lic no license in use. Um, or uh, authorized and you know everything worked well however when I switched to the uh, smart software management satellite uh, if you click on licenses here what would happen is it would show that there's still 20 here and zero here and then so it would say not in compliance so both the smart software um, manager satellite and on the up here would show that it's non-compliance. Turns out it was this issue here. Cisco Smart Licensing Satellite cannot borrow licenses from higher level to make it in compliance. Um, issue is only seen uh, when a uh, customer has shortage of UC Manager enhanced licenses, which with the NFR you get the 20 top tier and not the actual enhanced licenses. So um, for the time being, they just give you uh, demo licenses um, so th that's what these hundred are. These are temporary, like 60 day licenses that, um, so that my software doesn't get that error. And so, and essentially what this is, the, um, the reason I'm using this is because it's acting like prime. So I have a device that has both internal and external internet. So that way I can synchronize to, um, the Cisco smart, uh, cloud, to uh, re-establish the licenses. Here you can see the last synchronization, synchronization was uh, May 17th, which is, that's today, or no, that was a few days ago. So if I click synchronize now, this should be an automated process. And good, there's actually a delay here, which means it should go through. A lot of times in the evenings when I do this, it comes back with a 500 server error. Uh, from the and it says it couldn't uh, communicate but usually if i try to synchronize during the day then it's all good and you can also see i have it set for network synchron synchronization um, you can also set it up for manual um, and then you when you go to your uh, like satellite instances here um, you can download the sync response file and then just manually do it as long as you do it once a month then you're good to go. But in this case, since I have the satellite set up as a hybrid where one interface is pu you know, public, has public access and the other one doesn't, then, um, oops, uh, that way, that's how all my devices within um, the enclosed lab environment that doesn't have public internet access can then continue to register. Um, but again, as I say, the caveat for being a home user or anything like that is if your partner goes out of business or you don't have ties with them anymore, you lose your licenses. So that's just something to consider. All right, so with that said, um, in gen generally speaking, what I'm planning on doing is going through um, typical uh, setting up your uh, collaboration 12, but then also focusing in on the CCNA and CCMP topics as I go through them. Um, and because I'm going to have to test on it anyway. So usually when I study um, and it's fresh, I can make some uh, new videos as I go through that. Um, 
and then uh, <clears throat> and I was kind of try to gear it toward for those for those of you that want to um, get the certification. So I'm going to try to teach it to the test, um, especially after I take it um, to focus in on areas because a lot a lot of times I find with Cisco press books is uh, there's e they either add appendixes later that if you don't look online then you go to the test and it's like I never saw that content and then it's like well yeah they added it later online and so um, and you need to use multiple resources um, so I'm using a combination of CBT Nuggets INE uh, Safari books online um, as well as some other uh, local resources um, for my preparation but then once I have an idea of what um, kind of they focus on or because it's really based on in, from my experience it's if you don't have real world experience with it you're not going to pass the exam so I'll try to cover some of the not say what's on the test but cover things that um, you need to know from a technology standpoint really well um, to be able to pass it after I, I pass it myself that is <laughs> so um, but I'm also open to um, you know any other type of video. So with what I have now, if you want to see how to um, to install this or set set up the satellites, anything like that, um, let me know. Um, I checked. There's not a whole lot of stuff on uh, CUCM 12 right now, or really um, from a training aspect too. They're kind of scarce. Um, so I'm going to try to at least um, fill in those gaps um, as I can. So and then. Uh, yeah, any requests that you guys want, um, let me know and I will uh, work on that. So um, hopefully this gives you an idea what to expect. Uh, if you're going to 12, make sure you have those smart contracts and that uh, there's a known issue with using the CUWL licenses. And uh, for it to show in compliance, you're going to have to request demo licenses from Cisco um, just so it looks nice like this and sh everything is happy uh, as far as no red alerts or exclamation points warning you if something's missing or whatever so I'm sure I'm forgetting something but uh, <laughs> that's all I have for now and that's kind of what I want to give you just a heads up and um, see where we go from here so uh, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video